Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Shooting the Catfish devlog. If you're new to this series, Shooting the Catfish is a comedy RPG series being made in RPG Maker MV with a heavy emphasis on resource management. This week was all about adding a little more depth to the combat system. I want to keep things simple, but I think making players make decisions based on more than just damage output would improve the experience. Shooty's skills consist of Pistol, which is a simple damage boost, doing double the damage of his normal attack. His second attack is a shotgun. This does a little more damage, but now it also buffs the enemy attack for five turns. The idea being that the buckshot probably pisses them off. In episode three, Shooty gets access to the Magnum. It's substantially more damaging than the shotgun, and ammo for it's comparatively cheap compared to later weapons. So to balance this out, it has a 50% chance of missing. Magnums aren't exactly known for being particularly accurate after all. In episode four, Shooty gets access to the rifle. It's a big jump in damage again from the Magnum, but unlike the Magnum, it's very accurate. Thing is, it uses three bullets every time you use it, so it ends up being quite expensive. Also, if an enemy survives a hit, its defense is boosted for five turns. Lastly, Shooty gets access to the rocket launcher. It's a one hit kill, even on most bosses. Thing is, the ammo for it is ridiculously expensive, so you get very limited ammunition for it. Next up was Zat's skill set, and I wanted to move her attacks away from being all about damage and to focus on buffs and debuffs. Her first skill, or dis as they're called in the game, is Meathead, and I added a 50% chance for making the enemy blind, because they're blind with rage. Next is Yagrub, which now has a 50% chance of poisoning the target, because the words are so toxic, we've got nothing but great jokes here. In episode 2, Zat learns Peasant, which now also has a 50% chance of confusing the enemy, because it's a pretty confusing insult when you really think about it. Build Rat is learnt in episode 3, and it has a 50% chance of putting the enemy into a rage. It's not an insult many are familiar with, so I'm makes sense that people would get angry with confusion. Lastly, Zat learns Stupid Poopy Pants, and this is far more damaging and expensive than her other skills, but it also lowers the enemy's defense. Of course, I'm also taking the time to add some new status and buff effects to the enemy attacks to spice things up. Which attacks are being altered? Well, you'll just have to play to find out. Of course, now that the enemies can alter the player's states, I'm going to have to create some new items to put throughout the environment that can be used to cancel out those particular states. Alright, it is Saturday and today is all about healing items to help balance the new status effects introduced yesterday. First up, we need a cure for poison. Uh, most games would use a name like Antidote, but that seems a bit dull. Now with Demon Souls being a huge inspiration on this project, especially earlier on, I think I'll take some inspiration from that game and call it the Royal Lotus. And following along with that line of thought, we can also add cures for blind, confusion, rage and fascination with the Soldier's Lotus, the Widow's Lotus, Fresh Spice and Old Spice respectively. So to avoid frustration, I want to keep these pretty affordable, so uh, five gold each. Now, speaking of the economy, another common complaint with episodes one and two was a lack of gold. For a while, I thought about increasing the gold from combat victories, but I think I have a more interesting idea. Treasures with a set value like the nuggets in Pokemon. Let's take a page out of Resident Evil 4's book and use common treasures and region specific ones. And now we have a big long list of unique treasures. Of course, these are borrowed names, so I'm going to take some time to come up with new ones and descriptions as well. I ended up splitting the unique treasures into five for each episode, except for episode five, which has four, and they will all be found in dungeons, except for episode three, where they'll be found throughout the large town map to reward exploration. Hopefully, collectively, all of this comes together to make exploration more interesting. Okay, it is Sunday, and to start the day, I did something different and went for a nice rainforest walk. But I'm back home now, so let's get back into development. Today, I am going to be putting all of the new healing items and treasures into their respective dungeons. So to start the process, I quickly wrote down a list of what status effects can be found with the enemies within each dungeon. With that out of the way, it's time to start the placements. Thank you. 
And there we have it. All of the healing items and treasures are now distributed throughout all five episodes. Hopefully this goes a long way towards making the game more interesting. All that's left now is to update the vending machines that function as stores to also carry those new healing items. Now I noticed while I was updating the vending machines that a lot of environmental objects in episode 5 are still missing their flavor text, so I'm just going to quickly fix that. And one last thing for this week. It seems in episode 5 part 2 I missed an asset when I was upgrading the game's visuals. This is a Switch here, and it's still using the original Game Boy Color aesthetic. Let's take it into S Sprite and get it cleaned up. And to get it to the right resolution for RPG Maker MV, I have taken it into Photoshop where I blow it up 300% using scaling set to nearest neighbor. Now let's test it in engine and it's perfect. All that's left now is to update Trello. And it's looking pretty sparse now. Next week I'm going to be focusing almost exclusively on testing and bug fixes before moving on to the game's fully animated cutscenes. I hope you join me next time. Thanks for watching and feel free to check out my Patreon where you can get access to the game's source files. Until next time, happy developing.